This oh. conference will now be recorded. So the parsha is is parsha shoftim, but I do want to double back to such a foundational principle in in Judaism in how we view life. And the only way we can know fully how we view life is if we understand how we view death. And, you know, Rav Noach would famously say, right, if you're going to, if you're willing to die for something, then you have to make sure that you're willing to live for it also. So Shoftim is on page 1024, but I want to double back, and I actually, um, in more of a lunch and learn than a partial class, I made copies and I posted it over there. I'm sharing it over there also. But this is a tremendously fundamental um, idea that the Torah goes through and the commentators go through. So um, let's see the verse for, the verse first. It's Perik, it's page 1010. It is Perik Yudali, chapter 14, verse 1. Bonim atem la Hashem elokechem. You are the children to Hashem, your God. Lo tit go to do. Do not cut or gouge yourselves. Lo tasimu karcha. Do not cause baldness. Bein einechem, between your eyes. La mate for a dead person. What is this talking about? So Rashi explains that the way of the nations around us was that when a close relative would die, they would gouge themselves. They would pull out their hair as an expression of their absolute unbridled agony. And we're told, lo, tit go to do. We are warned, we are commanded, you are not allowed, a prohibition. Do not gouge yourselves. Why? Do not gouge yourselves as an expression of agony over a death. Why? Because you are the children of Hashem, of God. So all the commentators want to understand what is the connection between your being children of God and the prohibition to not gouge yourself in agony over a death? So on the sheet that I gave out over here, those in person and also posted, so you see there's a lot of blank spaces, okay? What I did with the blank spaces was I took the liberty of covering over God's name. And that way, we don't have a problem of what's called shamos of God's names on pieces of paper and being very careful where it goes, right? It shouldn't be thrown out, it needs to be buried. So that's what I did. But on this sheet, and let me see if those who are online will be able to see what I'm doing. One second, where is that? There it is. Okay, so can you guys see my little my little pointer over here? Does that help at all? Do you see a, a little a little diamond moving around? No. Okay. Okay. So first we have the Rashi over here. Okay, Rashi is, well, let's go this way then. One second, I'm back to you guys. Rashi on the page is over here on the page. Rashi explains, Lefi shatem banav shel makom. Since you are the children of God, atem ru'uyin liyot na'im. You need to be presentable. Right? How would you define Naim? Presentable. Velo gududim umakurachim. Not people who are gouged, not people who are 
have had their hair pulled out. So that's how Rashi looks at it, meaning we are the children of God. We are created in the image of God. The Gemara tells a beautiful story that the sage Hillel was walked out of the house going in a very resolute manner. So his students wondered where he's going. They start following him. They said, Rebbe, where are you going? He said, I'm going to do a great mitzvah. Now they really want to see what he's going to do. And here you see, he goes to a bathhouse, comes out of the bathhouse, and they're expecting him to continue on to this great mitzvah that he said he was going to do. But what does he do? He turns around and starts to go back, back to his home, back to the yeshiva. And they said, Rebbe, I thought you said you were going to do a great mitzvah. And he said, I did. So what did you do? I did a great mitzvah. What was the great mitzvah, they asked him. And he said, imagine there was a statue of the king. And then that statue got all dusty and dirty and some birds flew overhead and it got all messy. So a person would go and would clean that statue. What would that, wouldn't that be giving great honor to the king? So we are B'Tselem Elohim. We are in the image of God. And therefore, it's a great mitzvah for us to be clean, presentable. And therefore, that's how Rashi learns the pasuk. Miri, the pasuk said, you are children of Hashem. Do not gouge yourselves over a death, agony over a death. We're, we're working, on the, uh, working on the sheet, right? And the commentators all want to explain what is the keshe, what's the connection between children of God and not gouging yourself and agony over a death. So Rashi says, you're the children of God, you represent God, you are B'Tselem Elohim, you're in the image of God, therefore you need to be presentable. You can't walk around in a torn, gouged, hair pulled out manner. Let's go now underneath Rashi, here was Rashi. Let's go underneath now to the Evan Ezra. And I underlined over there. Banim. You are children. When you realize that you are the children of Hashem, mm. and Hashem loves you more than a parent, more than a father or mother. Therefore, I'll call Mashiach. Do not gouge yourself in agony over anything that he might do. He call Asher Yaase Litovhu. Whatever God is doing, it is for your benefit. We often don't understand, we often don't see it. And he addresses that. Vimlo Tavinuhu. And if you don't understand how could this possibly be good, how could this possibly be for our benefit? The same way that little children do not and cannot understand that which the parents do. Rock alav, but the child needs to trust that when the parent is is forcing this vile tasting liquid down their throats the child needs to realize that the parent is saving the child's life by giving them that medication the antibiotics that they're fighting against and they're spitting it out but the parent is doing this because in the before we had antibiotics kids would die from all of these different bacterial infections, a simple a sore throat, ear infection could be fatal. So the same way that the children don't understand that which the father is doing, parents are doing, Kain tasu gam atem. So too, that is how you should react. Ki am kadosh ata. You are a holy people, the children of God. So the Evan Ezra says so beautifully, it's letting you know that A, anything that happens is a loving move, a, le- a loving 
orchestration by a loving God that loves you more than anyone in this world, more than our spouses, more than our parents. It's only more than our children, that's easy, right? But even more than our spouses and more than our parents. And, but it's unfathomable, yes. Can a two-year-old, can a five-year-old understand what parents are doing? Of course not. Can they understand the decision that parents are making for them? Of course not. And the difference between a five-year-old and an adult is nothing compared to the difference between us and Hashem. There's, there's a beautiful, beautiful um, explanation that Rabbi, Sh- Rabbi Schwab has an incredible book, it's in English, on tefillah, on prayer. And, and he breaks and he explains it, he breaks it down so beautifully. So in the blessing of the Amidah, of the Shemona Esrei, of Modim, of Thanksgiving, so we first thank God for all the miracles that are with us, Erev, Avok, Erev, Tzaharayim, every evening, every morning, every afternoon, Hatov, you're good, your compassion never stops. And you're so compassionate. For all of them. Right? Uh, we thank you, Hashem, for all the wonderful things. Right? That's part A. Lengthy part A of this bracha. And then comes part B. And that is V'chol HaChayim. Now the art scroll the Cholachayim Yodu Chasela. The arch gold translated, may all the living thank you, God. And with what's going on in the world today, I've I've reverted back to that understanding of the Cholachayim, right? Let the whole world recognize and, and stop with all this craziness that's going on. But Rabbi Schwab says differently. He says, the Cholachayim Yodu Chasela. When we look back at our life, not every single snapshot is, oh, thank you, God. Oh, your compassion. Oh, your kindness. Oh, wonderful, 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 wonderful. Every single human being experiences pain, loss, tragedy, tragedy in our lives. And even when we look at someone and said, oh, they haven't had much tragedy, I, uh, a lesson that I learned is everyone works within their own parameters. We saw this very in a very funny manner. A very, very. We lived in Israel. Very, very, very close friends of ours. See, he was a caterer, and every Friday he would bring home the whole Shabbos, the whole Shabbos salads, side dishes, main courses, dessert, right. Every Friday, he'd bring home loads and loads, uh, the, the whole Shabbos. The works. The works, right? And very often, they would invite Natalie and I and our family to join them for Shabbos, which we would gladly do, right? I have to say, we accepted more invitations from them than we extended to them just because I, he comes home with the whole Shabbos every week. But we would, of course, invite them you know, periodically. And one time we invited them, and 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 the wife said to Natalie, "Oh, thank you so much for inviting us." She said, "I've had such a busy week, such a crazy week, and for me, the greatest vacation is not having to set the table and clean off afterwards." And my first thought was, "Set the table? That that's a big deal." No, it's all the cooking, it's all the shopping and the cooking and the, right? But for them, whatever they do, that becomes their yoke. That becomes what they need. So everyone, everyone, everyone has their pain. Everyone has their tragedies in life, even though that tragedy, you should see my tragedy, you know, forget about all that. Everyone has those moments in life. And that's what the second part of the bracha, of the blessing, is, is addressing. The chol hachayim. We need to look at the totality of life. And when we look at the totality of life, yodu 
seller. Then we thank you, Hashem, with the ups and the downs. We look at Chol HaChayim, the totality, the whole span of life, and we say, wow, this has been incredible. And praise at Shimcha Vemet, and with truth we'll praise your name. Hakel, the God, Yeshuatenu, the Ezratenu, we say. Yeshuatenu, the one who saves us sometimes, like, wow, God, you came through. But we also recognize Ezratenu, that when it doesn't go the way that we had hoped it would go, Ezratenu, we recognize, Hashem, you are still helping us that everything you're doing is for a purpose. And that's what the Evan Ezra, that's how he understands this, this epic pasuk, this epic verse of ours. You're the children of Hashem, so realize, hey, there's a loving father who's doing whatever he can for you, and you're a child who invariably is not going to, never will fully and often not even partially understand why it is. But therefore, don't go gouging yourself. The same way if, if grandma would do something, even though you think that it wasn't a good thing, but you know she's only doing things for your benefit, right? Certainly Hashem. So gouging yourself would be a, a, a certainly an inappropriate reaction. Yes, Harun. Uh, why does it even come up uh, singling out this commandment? Because those are pretty much the marching orders about anything. Do what Hashem tells you because he knows better with you. There are many way harder commandments that we have to follow before this. Yeah, yeah. So, so, kind of, so it's kind it, of it, it, I, I hear what you're saying. Aaron. It would seem to me, and we'll see the Ramban in a second, right? Judaism does not believe in a stiff upper lip, right? It's good to cry. You're sad? Cry. Right? One of the reasons why we tear Korea, why we rend the garment at, at a funeral, is that it is normal, it is healthy to feel a certain anger, a certain anguish. Right? And, and we do rip the garments at a funeral. So I might have thought being that we are not shy about expressing our pain, our anguish, our feelings, right? And actually, we do. There's a mitzvah, right? Not that little black ribbon that they give out. There's a mitzvah to, to actually tear the garment. And when it's over parent, we do it on the left side of the garment, right? To, that's where the heart is, right? We feel like our heart has been torn. Right? On all others, we do it on the right side of the garment. But we do tear a garment. So I might have thought, oh, so therefore maybe tearing my skin also is an, is a, a, an appropriate, acceptable expression of how one is feeling then, faced with this incredible, overwhelming loss. The puzzle comes to tell you that's how we draw the line. Why? Because this, this unbridled anguish, sadness, and we'll soon see more on that in Orachayim, sadness, yes, this, this unbridled anguish, that's going too far. Why? You're the children of Hashem. Let's see the Ramban. Ramban is now on the left-hand side of the page, over here. Ramban says, and I underlined it, Am Kadosh, a holy nation. Havdacha bikiyum nefashot. This is referring to a guarantee of the eternity of the soul. In other words, what happens down here is a small part of the overall picture. Havdacha, a guarantee. Bikiyum nefashot with the eternity of the nefesh, of the souls, lefanav, that will go before him, yitbarach, blessed is he. Yomar, so it's saying, acharei am kadosh, being that you are this nation, this holy nation, 
uskulat Hashem, and the treasure of Hashem. V'lo yisa elokim nafesh, I believe. I, I, what I think he's saying is, and God is not going to lift up, push away any soul. The choshev machshavot levilti yidach mimenu nidach. Rather, God is going to orchestrate events to make sure that no one is banished. No one is completely pushed away. And therefore, anything that anyone endures in this world is all part of this hashkacha pratit, this divine personalized orchestration in order to make sure that that person gains their eternity. Therefore, it's not appropriate, it's not ra'ui for you to gouge or to pull out one's hair over the death of a nefesh, even if they were to die at what we would consider to be a young age. And we'll see more about this in a minute with Or HaChayim. But importantly, the Torah does not prohibit crying. Right? A person, a human being is, 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 is pushed to tears. Right? Tears come to our eyes. The Piruda Oavim Unididam Afachayim. Even when we're taking leave of someone alive, right? They're moving away. They're going away. I imagine when the grandchildren were all leaving, right? So, as my father would say, Baruch Atavavoecha, Baruch Atavetseitacha. But I'm sure there were some tears in your eyes also as the grandchildren are leaving. That's, that's our nature, right? We're not going to see someone for a long time. We're saying goodbye. We become emotional. Certainly, it's appropriate, Ramban says, crying at a funeral when we're saying our last goodbye. We can no longer hug, see that person, of course. But the gouging, don't forget, he says, about A, the eternity of the soul, and B, everything that transpires is this orchestration to make sure that that soul gains its eternity. Therefore, gouging yourself over the top. Lastly, right underneath the Ramban, we have the Or HaChayim. The Or HaChayim says something very powerful. And he writes, Shebimitat Ish. I'll just preface by saying, when I was a very, very angry 12-year-old boy sitting Shiva for my sister uh, of blessed memory, very, very angry 12-year-old kid. And one of the rabbis who came to pay a Shiva call said over this, related this Or HaChayim. It's a beautiful Or HaChayim. I wanted to punch him in the face. And I wasn't a little 12-year-old. I was a big 12-year-old. <laughs> I wanted to punch him in the face. Instead, I just got up and walked out. Walked out of the room. And that is because as beautiful a message as a person might have, the mitzvah in a shiva home, in a house of mourning, is shtika. Be quiet. <laughs> Don't pontificate. Don't give a speech, don't give a sermon, don't talk about belief, stay quiet. The person asks questions, you, if they're asking you, then you can, you, you, you can, you can speak up. Uh, and, and to be fair, maybe someone did ask the rabbi something, I don't know, I certainly did, right? But the mitzvah is to be quiet. And it was years later when I came across this Or HaChayim and I was able to appreciate it and get over the trauma of that rabbi telling it to me when I couldn't hear it. Then it's become a tremendous source of comfort for me. But he explains as follows. 
ish, when a person dies, ein aveda lemate. The person who has died, they are not lost. They are not gone. Elaharehu dome la adam. This can be compared to a person. Shashalach vino lishora. A person sent away his son to do business, Le'ir Achere, to another faraway city, meaning there's a very, very successful father, and he wants the son not to just be leaning on the father's success and business. He wants him to create his own way, to learn how to handle himself. And therefore, he sends him away to a faraway city. And when he's at that city, he's there for years. I'm going to embellish a little bit. He's there for years and he builds close, loving relationships with many people there. Uliyamim. And after years and years of years of him being there, Shalach Ha'av Achar Beno. The father sends, summons the son. Time to come back home. So what happens? He goes to the port to board his ship and go. And all the people who have loved him, who knew him, they come to the port to say goodbye. And they're all very sad. They really grew to love this person. They're very sad. But no one's going to start to gouge themselves, to pull out their hair. The ain had their haben, they recognize the child, the son, is only leaving this place where he has been. But ultimately, what is he doing? He's not gone. He's not finished. He's no longer here. The Adrab, on the contrary, Latovlo. This is a beautiful thing. For this person, Shechazar Haben Eitzel Aviv. The son is going back to be reunited with his father. Shehu Makar Hachayim. And certainly in our case, what happens when there is a death? The person is being reunited with the Makar Hachayim. Makar, the very source the very fountain of Chaim, of life. That is what is happening here. The Alzeh ain't lanul hit godeid, the lasim karcha. And therefore he says it's certainly grossly inappropriate to start to gouge yourself or to, to pull out one's hair because banim atem la Hashem alokechem. You are the children of Hashem and therefore the child is returning back to Hashem. So those are four approaches. And like I said, that you know, if we could understand the Jewish approach to leaving this world, that helps give us a sense of how it is that we're meant to spend our life when we are over here in this world. So that is, uh, to me, that is so foundational to Judaism that I couldn't just uh, miss that. Okay, let's go back now to our parsha. I missed it. Where's that? <laughs> it's the first word in like the fourth and fifth line of the main print. I missed that one. <laughs> With all of my work, I missed that one. Thank you for pointing it out. But that also. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that would be. <laughs> and then twice. Elokechem. Elokechem, Elokechem. I missed those two. Okay. We'll go into Seamus. <laughs> all right. Also. Um, I made my effort. Um, let's see, Pasek. What page are you on, Janet? Um, 1013. 
in English. Um, okay. Okay, so in this edition, it's changed. In my edition, it says, you know, verse 9, it says anything that has fins or, or scales you may use. Even though the Hebrew says vague. And here it says and. But I almost have a very early, early edition with a typo because Roger caught this on the shop this afternoon when we were reading. What, which verse are you looking at? This up, uh, you may not. Which right? verse? Anything that, water, water. Anything that has fins and scales, yeah? So in the English, in my edition, it said anything that has fins or scales you may eat. So that, that's that's actually incorrect. Or scales. Yeah, that's incorrect. It's fins and scales. So I guess however, they have to be correct. Correct. However, however, um, we have a teaching already from the time of the Talmud that once it had anything that has scales, also will have fins. Yes. And therefore, if right, if you go to a to a, a store and you buy fish, right, there's a lot of counterfeiting. That goes on with fish, not just you know, nothing to do with kashrut. But certain fish are very, very expensive. Others are very inexpensive, and many people can't tell the difference. And it's really hard to tell the difference. So there is a lot of uh, sorry fishy business that goes on <laughs> when, it, when it comes to this, right? So therefore, the fact that they say that it is a kosher fish is not enough, right? Unless it has kosher certification or unless it has a scale right you find one scale on it then you know it is a kosher fish and you're good to go you have to be careful if they could be cutting it for you how they cut it on uh, surfaces they just cut the lobster and the clams right but besides that the fish is kosher so really one uh, scales is enough fins is not enough right so it really is fins and scales okay let's go back now to shoftim our parsha 10.24, Shoftim Vishotrim, judges and officers, Titain Lecha Bechol Sha'arecha. You need to place in all of your gates, Asher Hashem Elokecha Notein Lecha Lishvatecha. In all the gates that Hashem, your God, is giving to you for your tribes, Vishaftu Et Ha'am Mishpat Tzedek. And you must judge the nation in a righteous manner. Lo tatem mishpat. Do not tilt. How do they pervert? That's better. Justice. Lo takir panim. Don't uh, recognize anyone's face. Don't respect someone's presence. Right? This is the, even in the earlier stages. If I'm coming to court with Aaron, right? And I see the judge says, oh, Aaron, how are you? Looks to me. And what's your name? Right? So at that point already, I'm done. Right? I'm done. Right? And, and I won't even be able to express myself, to express my side in a proper, cogent manner because I see which way things are leaning already. Lo takir panim. Velo tikach shochad. And do not take any bribery. Ki shochad. Ya'aver ene chachamim. Bribery will blind the eyes of those who are wise. Vi salef divre tzadikim. And make divre uh, tzadikim, words that are righteous, or the words of the righteous, yi salef. It will make them crooked. It will pervert them. So a couple of, a couple of beautiful points here. Rav Moshe Feinstein points out, this is a communal <coughs> command of appointing judges and officers judges the ones who judge officers enforce this is a communal so therefore we should say right in the plural what's titain lecha should be given to you in the singular so rav moshe points out also the shla coder speaks about this idea that in addition to this general communal command of setting up proper court systems, we also have to have our own shoftim the shotrim. Every person needs to have 
judges and officers over their own gates. Isn't that a Titain l'cha. You have to, Ramosha says. You need to place shof to search him over your own gates. What are your gates? Your gates are your ears, what you listen to, what you hear, your eyes, what you look at, what you see, your mouth, what you say, that which comes in and out of your mouth. We need to be our own shoftim veshotrim. We need to be our judges, right? Meaning we need to judge, is this something that I should be saying or should be listening to or should be looking at or not? And sometimes the judgment is clear, right? I shouldn't say this, but I'm so tempted to say it. Right, and then we need to be the shoter. The shoter is the officer who who clamps it shut and makes sure that something that could be harmful to someone, embarrassing to someone, that that is something that we don't we don't allow it to come. We don't allow such things to go in or out of our own gates. The Gemara, when it discusses shochad says something very interesting, which at first might seem uh, somewhat um, questionable. The Pasuk says, the Gemara is on the, uh, says, and the Gemara Ksuv is, Shochalo Tikach, right? That is not only monetary bribes, right? Of course, a judge can take a monetary bribe, right? That completely undermines the whole system of society. But even a verbal bribe. And we give a number of examples. Shmuel, Shmuel, the sage Shmuel was crossing a bridge. Now their bridges were not, you know, uh, were not the Verrazano, were not the George Washington Bridge. It was a rickety little bridge he's walking across. Along came a person, Yavle Yade. And he took him by the arm to help support older Shmuel as he's going across. Shmuel made conversation. He said, oh, my Avidatech, what brings you here? Amalei, he said, oh, Dina Italy. Oh, I'm here for a judgment, for a court case. What did Shmuel say? Well, I can't be your judge. Why not? Because you came and took me by the arm, right? That's bribery. Not the person intended to bribe, but that would be considered as if I've been bribed, I've been compromised. Amima, another case, Amima was sitting and was judging a, judging a certain case. A feather fell onto his hat. A person came forward, shockly, and took it off. Amemar turned to him and say, Maya Viditech, what brings you here? I'm a lay dina itli. I'm here for a court case. I'm a lay pasuna lucha ledina. Fair enough. I can't be your judge. You took a feather off of my hat. Mar Ukva, another one. Ravi Shmo Varyosi, Havi Rogala Risi, Ravi Maiti Le Komali Shavata Kanta de Peri. He had an aris. He was, he was a field owner. There was a sharecropper who worked his field and every friday the sharecropper would bring the produce to the owner rabbi yishmael one week he brought it on a thursday instead of a friday he said ask them why are you here early you should bring on a friday why are you bring on thursday oh i need a call i i i have a court case that needs to be adjudicated I said, I might as well bring your fruits to you on Thursday instead of Friday. He did not want to accept it. And he said to him, Well, I can't judge your case. So instead, he appointed other judges to judge this case. As Rabbi Shmuel was walking there, he's overhearing the case. He's thinking to himself, oh, he should have claimed this. 
Oh, why didn't he say that? Oh, he could have made this claim. And then he looked at himself and he said, Wow, I see now what Shochad can do. Umani, here I am. Lo natalti. I didn't even take it. And had I taken it, Shali natalti. It's my own that I took. I owned it. It's my stuff. He owes me. He works for me. Kach. Nevertheless, I can only hear his side and couldn't hear the other side. The Kabli Shochad, those who actually would accept a bribe, Allah has kama vakama, how much more will that does that compromise them? And the question that can be asked, Rav Pam asks, what are these rabbis? Are, are are they so fickle? Are they so fickle yeah. that this is going to uh that this is going to influence them, compromise their integrity? Right? Really? Right? You know, I, I think most of us would be able to say, oh, I, thank you very much. I appreciate taking the feather, right? The feather off. Okay, now let's get down to business. But he explains that it's not that they are so fickle in terms of their judgment. It's that we don't recognize how much appreciation we need to have for other people. And even for they, even for a seemingly insignificant act that someone did, they are so filled with appreciation that yes, it would, it would influence them. And, and to me, this is a beautiful example that when we have what seems to be a cut and dry, you know, civil monetary law contained in this mundane law is how we are meant to wend our way through life. When people are always doing things for us, around us, and the degree of appreciation that we are supposed to feel, that we're supposed to, going back to the bracha we mentioned before, the chol right? right? To, to, to have our eyes open and to become appreciative people. Everyone wants to be around a person who is an appreciative person, who looks at life and says, what a blessing, what a blessing. This is amazing, this is great. And no one wants to be around. I think Saturday Night Live had a character. I think it was Debbie Downer, right? No one wants to be around, you know, the, the, the Debbie Downers of the world, right? And, and even more so, forget about everyone else. You don't want to be around yourself. You don't want to be around yourself. I know sometimes I, I have an encounter with someone who is just so, and I say to myself, wow. My heart breaks, not for that person's family, for that person. Right? This is this is the world that they have created around themselves. This is what they see wherever they look. Nebuch. Nebuch. It's it's it, it, it is tragic. It is tragic. So I'm wondering if there's been any commentaries about um like if you're going to be a judge if you've seen somebody do something very negative that it's you. oh to accuse yourself from it just because you observe something like if you saw somebody kick a dog you might say you know this is going to influence yeah. me to be yeah against them. yeah yeah I, I i i would agree with that but are but, there any like sources that i believe i i i don't i, I they don't come offhand but you know Look, lo takir panim, right? Which literally means don't recognize a face, right? Meaning if you're going to be coming into this with a uh, prejudice, that's what it is, free judge, right? You know, with a, with, a, with, with, with a certain feeling about this person, so then you should not trust yourself to be able to just focus in on this 
case, this situation, no matter what this person did the day before or a year ago, yeah, I, I, I think that will be included in low takir panim. That's like the example you gave where the, the um, judge knew Aaron but not the other litigant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, one last thing. T- today is Rosh Chodesh Elul, the start of the month of Elul. Actually, it's the 30th day of Av, but we treat it as Rosh Chodesh. Uh, tomorrow morning, we'll start with the blowing of the shofar. So I saw a, a nice Elul connection, and that's on page 1034. We are told... When Hashem will uh, cut down the nations in the land that Hashem has given you, and you will settle in uh, uh, chapter 19, verse 2, Shalosh Arim Tavdiyalach. Three cities you will separate. Betoch Artsacha, in the land that Hashem has given you to inherit, and prepare the way to there, and divide it up equally amongst the borders there, verse 3. Vahayalanus Shama Kol Rotseach. Right? And that'll be a place where if a person uh, killed someone, we'll soon see what type of murder we're talking about. The Zedvar said, this matter of Tzedek HaShem Yanushama, he could run there, the Chai, and live. It's a safe, it's a sanctuary city, literally. If someone killed someone else, Bivli Dat, without knowledge, without intent. He's not someone that he hated in the past. Rather, Pasuk 5, he came, he, the poor guy went to the forest, to chop wood, and he sent forth his hand. His hand swings that axe, to cut a tree. To explanation, the Gemara, either the, the, the head of the axe flew off the handle, or a chip of wood flew off from the tree that he was chopping, umatzad re'eyo, and it hit his friend, Vamate, and he died. That is called vishogeg, non-intentional. Ku yanus el Right? He will run to one of these cities, and there he will live, and he will stay there until the death of the Kohen Gadol, and then he can be, and then he, he can move back home. So we have this concept of an ear miklat, a city of refuge. And if you look back to page 420, there too we have a reference to this ear miklat, page 420, which is chapter in, Shem, in Shemot in Exodus 21, verse 13. The Asher, okay, Asher Lot Sadat. If a per, the, the previous verse said, if a person strikes another person and he kills a person, Mot Yumat, there's capital punishment for that. The Asher Lot Sadat, but one, he had not hunted him down. Velukim Ina Liado, the God brought him to his hand. And right, the guy happened to be in the forest just as the head the head of my axe falls off and kills the guy. The Samti Shama. I'll create for you a place to where he could run to. And that's the ear Mikla we saw in this week's parsha. So they point out if you look at the words Ina Liado Visamti Lucha, those four words. First letter of each word is Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed, Elul. So there is a hint to Elul, the month of Elul, when it comes to Ir Miklat, the city of refuge. So different commentators approach, what is the city of refuge Elul connection? And an explanation that's given I saw uh, Rabbi Fran speaks about that. I'm not sure who he quoted on this. Why do we send this fellow to... Well, why does this person... It was an accident. It was an accident. What do you want from the guy? It was an accident. But our, our understanding is that Hashem will not let 
an accident happen unless you are not careful. If you're fully careful, right? You know, example, you know, I accidentally turned on the lights on Shabbos. Okay, if I'm fully, fully careful, I'll take the light. And one of the problem of accidentally turning on the light is something that I'm really, that I really, really value. Then I am scrupulous, scrupulously careful. So if this person accidentally killed someone, it means that this person was not fully valuing the gift of life the value of life. So therefore, where do we send him? To an ear miklat. Who were the main residents of the ear miklat? Living. Living. People like Aaron, who set a sterling example. Right, the Levim, they didn't have fields to work. They were dedicated to serving Hashem. And therefore, they were people who recognize, you know, there's, there's, there's a beautiful, at my previous shul, when I had my prabha, my my trial weekend there, so they told me I need to get, I need to speak at the Kiddush in under a minute. <laughs> they wanted, that's a good way of weeding out rabbis. How many rabbis can speak in less than a minute? <laughs> so that was, so that, so that was one of, uh, one of the speaking slots that they gave me. So I told of the story in the Gemara, of Rabbi Hanan and Ben Tradion, who's being taken out to be killed for having the audacity of teaching Torah publicly. And, and as, he's, as he's burning, it's a slow death. The executioner says to him, if I take off the, they, they put wet wool around his heart. If I take off the wet wool, right, right, so, so that you don't have as much pain, you'll die quickly. Well, can I go with you to the world to come? And he said, yes. And he took it off. And the heavenly voice said, Rabbi Hanania, and the executioner are welcome in the world to come. Rebbe heard the story and started to cry. He said, Yesh kona olama b'shachat. He said, someone can acquire their eternity in one minute. Why was Rebbe crying? Why was he crying? Oh, I've worked so hard my whole life, and this guy got it in a second. It's not fair. No, Rebbe was crying because he recognized the power of a moment. In this moment, this person had completely turned his life around. How many moments do we have in our life? So Rebbe's was amazed by the power of a moment, right? Then in one minute, a person get hired for a job. You never know, right? <laughs> so he sent to the Ari Miklat, the cities of the Levian, because that is a place where he is surrounded by people who recognize the value of life, the value of a moment, the value of time, the value of life. And that will help him regain or gain that appreciation of life. And so there are those that say, Ir Miklat is a sanctuary in place, in space. Elul is a sanctuary in time. And that is a time where we are meant to focus on the value of life and the gift of life and how to best utilize this gift that's been given to us and that does connect what we began with that when we recognize we are banim atem, the children of Hashem Elokeichem, then we recognize that we're in the image of God that Hashem is leading us through and giving us this opportunity like Ramban said for our eternity to make sure that we that we utilize this gift, this gift, gift of every moment of life that's given to us to utilize it in the best possible way to make ourselves a bracha to others, make ourselves someone who draws close to Hashem and helps bring Hashem's presence down into this world. Okay, so let me wish everybody a chodesh tov, a, a good month of Elul and a shavua tov, and again, if I didn't mention, uh, uh, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock the, at the JCC, the email probably should have gone out already, there's going to be a, a gathering, of, a community-wide gathering over the, of the hostages that we've lost. 
and um, a number of rabbis, I'll be saying a few words and we'll be blowing shofar and a way for us all to come together in a unified manner and and feel 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 the pain and also feel the unity and the and the community that we are so that's at the jcc wednesday at 6 p.m and the show for blowing we thought was appropriate in that Elul has begun all right everybody good seeing you all thank you thank you, thank you. okay i don't know i i, I am switching